Hi, my name is Dr. Hannah Hamlin and I am a person living with type 1 diabetes. Today we're going to talk about how much exercise is recommended for someone living with type 1 diabetes and my pup Ella is napping so she will be my sidekick today. <laughs> so really, you know, when we think about exercise requirements for type 1 diabetes, it's kind of a silly thought in that we know that in order to be a healthy human, it's important that we have an exercise routine. So how does that differ for somebody with type 1 diabetes? And the answer is when we look at the American Diabetes Association guidelines, it really doesn't. The recommended requirement of exercise for someone with type 1 diabetes is the same as the general population, which makes sense, right? Type 1 diabetes is an insulin kind of deficiency, not an insulin sensitivity challenge. Not to say that that can't be true for some people with type 1 diabetes, but type 1 diabetes it kind of in its origin is just not having enough insulin. And so it then becomes really important for us to learn how to manage our insulin requirements and the changes in our insulin requirements around the types of exercise that we're doing. Now what we see is that the recommended amount of aerobic exercise, so exercise where your heart rate's up, you're kind of at a pace where you're breathing heavy enough where it's not natural to kind of have a full on conversation. So walking doesn't fit into that category, more of jogging, swimming, if you think of that type of exercise, 150 minutes a week. So depending on how many days a week you're working out, that looks like a 25 minute to 45 minute uh, workout per, per day. Um, and really that's something that is doable. Now, when we look at the importance of types of exercise, not only is that aerobic, that cardiovascular exercise important for optimizing general health, including better outcomes with type 1 diabetes, but so is strength training. This is one that I find often my patients and even kind of friends and family members kind of miss out on or don't understand the true importance of resistance training. What we see is that building and maintaining lean muscle mass is absolutely crucial for metabolic health in general and longevity. Now, what's really interesting about exercise and we kind of take off the diabetes filter and looking at studies is that we know not only is exercise helpful for long-term great outcomes, longevity, health in the future, but we know that when we exercise in the day-to-day, -day, people have an improved sense of well-being when we compare them to people who don't exercise. And so exercise is something that can absolutely positively impact your quality of life today, not just doing something to prevent future, doing something to try and get a certain type of a kind of body image that you're going for. There are so many benefits for exercise that are really important, um, both aerobic and strength training, we see that. And so really what, I, what I'd like to do is link below some of the medical studies for those of you who are interested in what studies are out there on diabetes and type one diabetes and exercise specifically. But what we know is that it's really complicated. And you know that, you know, if you're living with type one diabetes and you've, you've done different forms of exercise, it's not always predictable initially. Strength training can impact our blood sugars in a different way at different timing and our insulin sensitivity changes in a different way than cardiovascular exercise. So lifting heavy weights versus going on a run, we likely won't respond the same way. And so it's really important as we're learning to exercise with type 1 diabetes that we also learn how to manage our insulin needs and the changes there. And I'll have another video about that that I'll link below later. But really, the kind of takeaway from this is 150 minutes of exercise per week including that aerobic cardiovascular training and strength training. Now, if you want to add in an extra longevity benefit, mobility is incredibly important. So that's things like stretching, yoga, really making sure that we're creating muscle mass that's in a, in a balanced posture in a way that will protect our joints long-term. Um, so with that, 150 minutes, you can take out the number of days you would like to exercise per week, divide that by 150, and that kind of gives you a basis to start on. Now, one thing that's important with that is that we do see, specifically with diabetes and type 1 diabetes, even more specifically, is that it's much more effective to exercise at more frequent intervals than trying to put that 150 minutes on a Saturday, if that makes sense. And really that's because the blood sugar changes that we see or the insulin sensitivity changes that we see after a workout can last anywhere from 12 to 24 to 48 and sometimes even up to 72 hours. And when we see those insulin sensitivity changes, it would require, may, require a drastic change in your diabetes routine on Saturday to get through that 150 minutes and then kind of understanding the repercussions as they wear off over the next couple days and then going back. So it would create a cycle that's absolutely doable if you wanna do it that way, but tends to be a little bit more complicated. I find that when I work out more frequently, more days of the weeks for 
of the week for a shorter amount of time, that tends to do really well and create more predictable blood sugar cycles that works for me. Again, anything is possible, but typically if you have a choice and you're making your routine from scratch, I'd recommend starting with breaking out more frequently for shorter amounts of time.